that applies to everybody <laughs> except you. Apparently. <laughs> um, I always, I, I, I kind of compare Philip Rivers and Eli. I've always thought Philip Rivers is a little underrated. Eli's a little overrated. Maybe it's the San Diego and New York market, whatever. But they feel the same. They're not overly mobile, and they're not, they're not the classic prototype. They've got some different quirkiness. When you look at Eli and Philip historically, even this year, is Philip a little underrated? Is Eli maybe a little overrated? Well, the two Super Bowls make a lot of people believe that Eli is a better quarterback, and that's fair. The goal is to win championships. But to me, if you isolate each quarterback, uh, their skill sets, their career, I would probably say to me that Philip Rivers is, is a better quarterback. Yes. And, uh, you know, I feel pretty comfortable saying that based on probably seeing almost every one of their snaps in their careers. Yeah, I mean, Eli had the Mara family. You know, I mean, there's something to be said about ownership. He had Tom Coughlin. There, there is something to say about who is helping you along the way. Speaking of the Chargers, I picked them two weeks ago. I said, this team's going to win this division. They have a lot of good players. Keenan Allen been reborn. When you look at their offense, I thought Phillip Rivers against Dallas, that's as good as he's been in a long time. What is it with yeah. their offense on tape that jumps out to you? He was great in that game. In the first half, the Cowboys played a lot of zone. He picked them apart. They went man in the second half, and he made really precise ball location throws. I think one player over the last month has really become a factor for them, and that's Austin Eckler. Uh, I think now he's taking snaps away from Gordon. Uh, Gordon will still be the feature runner, Colin, but Eckler is playing – uh, in, in certainly in third down situations, in a lot of uh, three wide receiver situations, he can line up all over the formation. He caught a 38-yard pass last week when he was split outside. Uh, he, he he ran a sluggo route, a slant and go versus a linebacker. Uh, he's becoming a, a pretty important piece of this offense going down the stretch. When I watch the Cowboys, everybody now is blaming Jason Garrett, but Jason Garrett created a productive offense with Romo, a productive offense with Dak last year. When you look yeah. at when you look at Dallas. His offensive problems. You know, last year I was kind of being, I was joking around calling him Dak and Dunk. Uh, is it that he is a limited thrower downfield? What is it? Well, I would say this. I think the sample size isn't large enough to to place blame. But the, I will say that the passing game has not been good enough over the last number of weeks to stand alone without the running game being the foundation. And I, that's been the issue for them. At this point, their passing game overall is not good enough. But don't forget, the team's not built that way. So it's hard in the middle of a season to make a dramatic change like that. So they're basically built to be a pounded team, and he throws on play action, basically. Yes. I mean, that's the... You can always pick out individual plays and say, well, he, uh, any quarterback made a great throw. But the reality of how they're built is they start with the run game, and Dak is a complementary piece who certainly can throw the football well, but that's how, that's how their offense is structured. Okay, Eagles-Seahawks, big game Sunday night. Yes. Can't, can't wait for this game. Now, we're giving a lot of praise to Carson Wentz. He absolutely is a special player. But is there some secret sauce within that offense <laughs> that you have noticed? Well, I think we have to look at the run game of the Eagles. They're the second best run game in the league. They're actually, we just finished talking about the Cowboys, the best first down rushing team in the NFL oh, are the Eagles. Wow. Think about that. And, and they're playing a run defense that's the fourth best in, in run defense. So the Eagles run the ball. They want to run the ball. You know, the Eagles are not a downfield passing team by, by their Design. They'll take some shots, but Carson Wentz is not among the league leaders in 20-plus yard completions. They're a very rhythmic passing team. The run game is critical to their offense, and I think that's a really intriguing part of this matchup. So last week, I, I thought the game that I really wanted to watch, because I think the NFC feels thicker and better uh, and more competitive in its top six uh, than the AFC. So the Saints played the Rams. And, you know, listen, it, it, the, the Rams – at home, bouncing back. That's a long trip for the Saints. It's easy to just make a definitive opinion. Okay, Rams are this. But, you know, when the game was all over, yards per play, the Saints were competitive. Uh, it, the, the, they were never really out of the game until the last drive when the Rams sealed it. Saints-Rams, what jumped out to you on yeah. tape? What jumped out to me on tape uh, was the fact that the Rams' defense looked and played a lot faster than the Saints' offense. It was really noticeable on tape. And when all was said and done, maybe the numbers didn't reflect that, but, boy, it, it sure showed up on tape. Although I will say this, 
I think Alvin Kamara right now may be the best receiving back in the NFL as a rookie. Yeah. His combination of route running ability and run after catch is as good as any back in the league. So let's switch sides for the Rams because they're a real team now. So, yeah. so Jared Goff did not have his security blanket. Now, that may not matter to Aaron Rodgers or Big Ben, but for a young quarterback losing Robert Woods, he was his go-to guy on big plays. He was gone against really good players for the Saints. Did he impress you? Yeah, and I'm, see, I, I'm not sure I'd say that Woods was the go-to guy. I think Woods catches a lot of balls because of the way the offense is structured. The offense is structured. They're a team that lines up with two and three wide receivers to one side of the field and Sammy Watkins on the back side. And predominantly, the route combinations and the reads to the front side where there's normally three receivers, that's where Goff looks. So Woods is the recipient of that. Woods is not the guy. It's not like Woods is Jerry Rice or, or you know a receiver, and they say we have to get him the ball. He's part of a structured, well-designed, well-schemed pass game, and that's where the focus is by design, by progression design. I want to segue to this. Jimmy Garoppolo, I don't know if San Francisco wanted to play him. I, th I almost think they wanted to play C.J. Beathard, lose the rest of the way, get the number two pick, <laughs> and sell it off uh, to somebody for a bunch of picks. So somebody needed Darnold or Josh Rosen. Uh, Garoppolo and Mike Shanahan's history. You know Shanahan's yeah. history. You know we have a little bit, a little bit of film on Garoppolo. It, it, Shanahan Garoppolo, what do we think it's going to look like for a month here? Well, I think it's going to be tough for the month because I think that their O-line is not real strong and they don't have a lot of skilled position players. But I think that Garoppolo fits Shanahan because Shanahan demands a quarterback that has some quickness to him uh, because he likes the boot action pass game. He works off the stretch zone run game, so your quarterback has to have some movement. Matt Ryan got way better at that later in his career, so he worked. But I think Garoppolo's skills that fit Shanahan, I'm not sure it'll come out this week or next week, but I think over time, this is a team that needs a number of drafts to build. They're missing a lot of things on offense. Yeah, that's why I think they wanted to kind of a jet fuel. If they could get that two pick and they don't need a quarterback, there's probably somebody that would move up. There's a lot of teams needing quarterbacks. Um, you Do you like Garoppolo? I forget. I do. I oh. do like Garoppolo. Okay. I mean, I, I personally think, again, I think he's more talented uh, skill set wise than Mitchell Trubisky. Okay, all right, that's good. Yeah, I mean, I like him, too. Again, I, I have such a – it's hard for me to judge anybody in New England. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, you're right. Coordinators, you're... players. De I love Dion Branch. He left New England. He disappeared, you know. So, uh, But I think he's got, he's got a pretty good arm, right? Yeah, he's a snap thrower with a quick delivery with a very good short to intermediate arm. He can certainly throw – the deep ball, uh, but I wouldn't say he's a gun for an arm, but he's a snap thrower. I, I like Garoppolo. I think, his, I think his game fits today's NFL because he can make plays on the move as well. Uh, okay, finally, the big play. I'm so happy. It, it's the <laughs> only thing that would make me happier is if it was a LeBron James play, but it's a Tom Brady play. No, I decided to go this way because, look, this team's playing really well. It seems like we don't talk about them a ton, but just one quick point. They are so good on first down passing. Uh, Brady is, is among the league leaders. He's averaging almost, I think, near 10 yards per attempt on first down, wow. and this was first down last week. So let's start the play right now, and you can see it. It's early in the game. I think it's their second possession. He's going to hit Philip Dorsett yeah. on a deep cross, and it looks wide open, and I'm sure people thought, hey, they blew the coverage. Well, look at the tight splits by Cooks and Dorsett, close to the formation. There's a reason for that, because they're going to run what's called a post-cross combination. So they need to get to where they go quickly, so they need to be tight to the formation. And now that's Xavier Howard and Tankersley. They're the defenders. So as we start this play, you're going to see right there that Howard, this is cover three, actually, it's zone. He's sticking to Cooks because he's responsible for one vertical, for the receiver to the outside running deep. Tankersley, he's playing zone. As I said, this is cover three. So when Dorsett starts to go inside, he passes him on. He thinks that the safety is going to take him. So what happens here is Dorsett runs across the field. He's running his crossing route, but it's zone. But Howard is still stuck on Cooks because 
He thinks that's his guy even in zone because he's the vertical guy to his side. So this is how Dorsett gets open. You see this all the time with post cross versus cover three. Very often the crosser ends up being wide open, particularly a deep crosser, because the underneath coverage is not going to get that deep. But this is not a busted coverage, Colin. This is just breaking down cover three with a post cross combination. That's so good. Yeah, I watched that play.